to play up people's superficial perception of the church just because it's more popular. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's I'm just, concerned it's, about I mean, there's that. A, it's I not, think about it's this not all just the that time. it's superficial. It's like it's it's a limited, it's a small view. Yeah. You know, it's it's a less uh, it, uh, superficial is because people are having real encounters. You know, it's like people are having real. Uh, real encounters with Jesus. And so it's not, it's not purely superficial, but the, um, the energy, that kind of intensity and that kind of um, exterior joy is not sustainable. And at a certain yeah. point you have to recognize that it's not, and then let yourself be okay. Because if you, if you continue in the superficial joy and the super sorry if you continue in the exterior joy without interior joy you're going to be playing a part and you're slowly going to get jaded and being like i have to play yeah. this role right and this is when people start talking about religious trauma like i felt like i had to put on a face and it's like yeah, actually you should you didn't have to welcome to the crunch the only podcast wearing white after labor day it's your boy ethan and i'm patrick it's gray all right what to clarify and this is the crunch a comedy podcast where we try and figure out if catholics can be funny i wasn't talking about your shirt i'm talking about i was talking about my white i have bright white chinos on really because because after this after labor day after this i'm going to the discotheque yeah, <laughs> you found the discotheque in Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah, there's actually there's one right down the road, and there's a bunch of uh, cool mustachio gentlemen uh, eager for me to uh, drop by. The only thing, want to be the only friend. thing in your town is a round barn, no, and a Protestant coffee shop. Wrong. Those are the two biggest things in my town. <laughs> there's also a and restaurant. There's also a restaurant called Fuzzies that uh is just like a garage that someone has on the back of their house and the only way to get food is by like knocking on their front door and then they just bring it to you but it's like a real restaurant on google that's amazing yeah i'm scared to go there that's so cool man yeah. i should have moved there holy cow i've i've been saying me sleeping on sleeping in my childhood bedroom instead of on ethan's back porch there there are Homes for sale near me in the uh, mid twos. So try wow. to find that. Some people have said else. that I am a mid two. A mid two? Yeah. I'd say you're more of a. You're not a two. Goodness. <laughs> what, what are you, are you mean? talking about? No, you're not a two. Rank me, Ethan. If Rank you're me a... on a scale of one to ten. On on like attractiveness or like fun. Yes. F- oh, um. I don't know. Actually, whatever gives me a higher score. Really <laughs> okay, sure. okay, okay, okay. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Well, given that I have these white chinos on, your score is probably going to be higher than it otherwise would be. So why is that? Well, <laughs> the I'm, chinos raise my score. I, no, I'm. I just am feeling a little fruity. So. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Are you uh, like Father uh, Father James? Are you uh, coming out? Am I coming out? Instead of a contest. Instead of a contest. No, I'm not. Um, I think you're. I think you're a solid. You know. So if I'm a ten, you're probably like an eight. That's fair. I'll take that eight. Yeah, you're a solid eight. Yeah. So obviously, I don't. I can't think of any man that beats me on the scale. There's a bunch of men underneath me, and there's a bunch of men that are at the same level as me. <laughs> but Ryan if you were Gosling, to, no, Ryan. famous guys. Famous guys are not hot. This is people don't understand this. The hottest yeah. man that I know is probably my next door neighbor. <laughs> and the guy and the guy from the Dead Sea that we and saw. The guy from the the guy from the, the guy Dead Sea. who was wearing oh, a speedo whoa. with just the biggest old Dude. belly you okay. ever did see. I take it I take it back. And now that I'm see I see that guy's image is burned in my brain forever. That's the only guy on my skeleton <laughs> eleven. He's the only person. I want. I was waiting. It was so hot and it was so Dude. salty and so sandy. But I wanted to watch him float on his back because oh, it would be like an island appeared. Yeah, yeah. His is his belly. I'm not body shaming. I'm body affirming. His no, belly it's was amazing. Perfect. 
his, his body, belly this guy looks like <laughs> artistic depictions of pregnant women like yeah. real pregnant women don't look like artistic depictions of pregnant women you no. know what i mean real pregnant like the baby kind of sags you know the, the belly kind of hangs a little bit the baby know, so the kind baby, of sags there. there's a baby in there right <laughs> yeah and he's sagging it's not a perfectly round the baby's like squirming and it moves like alien you know it's all that stuff. right the belly is not perfectly round right but his belly was perfectly round. This is crazy. I don't know how much. And he was wearing the he had the skinniest legs and just the <sighs> massive belly. It was it, it was, was not so cool. Like if you watch those television programs, like My Seven Hundred Pound Life or whatever, he didn't look sure. like that. But he could. No. He probably he he was. He, it was like he was made out of like a meteor, like he was a really dense material. You know, like something that he was, was easily three fifty. This easily. man was made of tungsten, and yeah. uh, and he had. Like it was like if you just kind of took a saw and just like sliced like from his nose down, <laughs> he would be like a uh -huh. perfectly in shape guy. But just like his belly, like he went down from the <laughs> nose and then it just goes out perfectly. And it was taut. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. It was it was tight. He wasn't sagging at wasn't all. There was no sagging. wrinkles. He, was he wasn't tight. wrinkling. He wasn't wrinkling. He wasn't hairy. He was he was like the he was a muscular fat guy. How does he find shirts? It was, it was amazing. I just don't. I just don't understand. I, I've never seen a whatever body. you're picturing. It's not big enough. It's, like his can't. belly was so <laughs> much bigger than you think. And also, did he? Did you walk by him? I walked. He walked by me, and he was like seven feet tall. He yeah. was so he's, tall. Like, he was like he's, taller than Father Adam. Like if you sat so by tall. him, you sat by him on the plane. Like if you were next to him, you wouldn't have to worry. You'd have to worry if you were in front of him. You see what I mean? Like yeah. it was not, he, would he need, does not spill he would over. He sit in the exit row. You he know? doesn't spill over into the seats next to you. He like, he would yeah. prevent the person from reclining all the way back in front of him. <laughs> He's in the front. <laughs> he was perfect. You'd want to sit next to him because he would probably let you cuddle up and like, you know, rest your head on his you could, beautiful. You could, yeah, it was, you could, you could use his belly as like one of them. What do they call it when you hatch the birds? He looked like King K. Rule he did. from Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> King That's K, what he looked like. King K rule when you if you're playing Smash Ultimate and you use his down B, his counter move, when he sticks his belly out uh -huh. really far and it flashes, that's what he looks yeah. like. But all the that's time. That's what he looks like. King K rule. <laughs> Dude, forever. that's perfect. That's exactly it, you've got it. That's exactly, exactly right. what he looked like. And Dude. it was he was so and he was wearing like tiny little bathing suit. It was like Yeah. It, he had to have been Italian so, or like Greek he or something. To, yeah, yeah. It was, he was amazing. He was and he wasn't even floating. He was just standing. Just standing and staring. I can't even... I think you guys can tell how much in awe Patrick and I were of this gentleman. It was just, you had to be there. Like and It was we, at the Dead Sea. We had a sea. great time. Oh, we, yeah, we're at the Dead Sea, this, this eighth wonder of the world. And there's number nine right in front of us. <laughs> yeah, we got two world wonders in one day. Is the Dead Sea one of the eight eight wonder, natural wonders of the world? It, I don't know. If it is, it shouldn't be. I hated the Dead Sea. What a terrible was, experience. Yeah. It's yeah. just it's so hyped up and uh it's just so many people and it's hot and you're like you have to walk all the way from the bus down all the way down. It's, it's just, a long walk. Certainly. It's a pretty long walk. And it's walk. a longer walk on the way back up too. Yeah. Not it's just because you're feeling it. Cause you don't realize how like i mean if you've ever been on a boat you understand it's just like it's hot and it, you're exposed and the sun just drains you of all of your energy yeah and then the salt water does extra so just imagine just imagine that all ugh, it was great it's, if you get the water in your digestive system you need to go to the hospital it's just like <laughs> yeah it's i mean but to be fair it's just probably not wilderness. that's probably true for the rest of the world but if an american swallows the water in the dead sea it's probably equivalent to like eating mcdonald's once it's taco know, bell yeah. same amount of sodium did you have you seen those sodium warnings on taco bell's meals no they they're starting to do that now like yeah so they 25 they were years legally too late. obligated they were legally obligated by some state statute and they just did it everywhere that they need to place a sodium warning on a meal if the sodium content is higher than the daily recommended value. <laughs> so they have meals at Taco Bell that are higher than your daily recommend. All of your sodium in one day, in, oh, one, in one meal. Holy cow. Taco Bell is insane with the sodium content. Your daily intake should be approximately 2,300 milligrams. Most of Taco Bell's combos meals boxes are equal to or above that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Holy cow. Can you imagine that's having wild. that's 2300 milligrams isn't that 2 2.3 grams? grams of <laughs> of salt 
Yeah, 2,000 milligrams. Might as well say two grams. Two grams. That's a lot. <laughs> two grams. It's, a gram is not insignificant. Like a gram, you can hold a gram, you know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a, a packet of sugar is three grams. They sugar. call it a telegram because it weighs about as much as a gram? No. They call it a gramophone gram. They call it a grandma because it weighs about <laughs> as much as a gram. Dude, I saw my grandma <laughs> this last weekend. First of yeah, all, yeah, she done. She's well, she's in a lot of pain. They're thinking oh. about they're thinking about that. We're always talking about her doctors and what they say. Yeah, sure. She got the blood pressure. She's got the back problems. Now they're, yeah, they're you got the hypertension. You got, you got the hypertension. You've got the she took a fall. She had a spill the other day. Oh, that was sick. she was closing the Venetian. About the hip. She was closing that. Venetian blinds on the south side of the house in her bedroom on the western part of the south side, not the eastern part of the south side. And she just fell over. And she like, you know, looked at she was wearing a red bandana and she you know she got it was a drive by they she was on the west side of the house and you know, that's 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 you know are that's you saying territory are you saying my grandmother is a blood it was, it was just strange that you were like she's like yeah she's on the south side of the west side of the house and you know that's no, that's crypt territory so you gotta stay out of there i'm just relaying to you the amount of detail that she gave to me when she told me the story oh that's classic old person yeah yes. i love that my grandma my grandma's so funny we were talking about this i'm just day. happy that that you can remember that much details grandma uh, yes thank <laughs> you grandma for having good memory in your age but so my grand, my grandpa we were with my grandparents this weekend labor day and my me and my brothers were all talking with my mom and we were like none of us really know what our grandpa did for a living <laughs> like <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? Like I, I have, I actually have no clue. Like I really like my mom asked me like, what do you think that he did? And I was like, he did. He was like an accountant, but which I was pretty close. Plant, worked at the plant. He was worked at the plant. Um, he it ended up that he like ran payroll for an air force base at some point. Yeah, like, give me a color collar, like white, blue, pink. Which yeah. one? Green, yeah. green collar. But he me. he went through his whole like every step of the way you know he owned a liquor store at one point he did this and this and this nice. and then he had all these things and he eventually he retired and he told us the whole it took like 30 minutes he went through the whole thing it was great it was entertaining it was it was there was levity it was fun we start moving on in the conversation and he goes well you have to ask grandma what her you know career was like and my grandma starts off and she starts talking about what she did right out of college and then she got pregnant with my mom and then you know they were gonna have the baby shower and she couldn't make it to the baby shower because she had my mom and and then she locked her keys in her car when they had the makeup baby shower and then my my mom was born at this time and the hospital was such a great hospital and she like went off on this whole thing and my grandpa had and to step didn't in say what she did my grandpa had to step in and be like so what did you do like what was your career like <laughs> she was like oh i worked at the same place for 40 years <laughs> She just was like, it's like grandma, you could have just. But the funny thing about my grandma is that her boss was a billionaire, and he owned a casino in Vegas. Ooh. It was friends with another notable casino owner in Vegas, one Donald J. Trump. And so, nice. when my grandma, I thought you were going to say Tony, what's his name from Ocean's Eleven? Tony Robbins. My when no. my when my grandma's boss got married, he got married at Mar-a-Lago. Who's the best man? Oh. The Don. No way. Who's at the wedding? My grandma. So <laughs> my grandmother. So your grandma met Donald Trump. They have a picture together. I've seen it. Like That's this really is, cool. She showed it to me like back when he was apprentice guy, you know, like she was like, look, I have a picture mm -hmm. with Donald Trump. I was like, oh, that's so cool. He's famous. And now she's she met the president. I asked him if he did the the on the dance floor, if he did this. And she didn't remember, but then I did. I did my trauma from pressure for my grandparents, and they thought it was funny. So, feels yeah. feels good, man. Like, that is what he sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> probably not back then because I don't think he. Maybe he did sound like that back then. Have you ever no, listened to like he his just, old? He sounds like a, like an old New Yorker. Yeah, is that how they all sound? He that's the way he talks. Like he talks like a gruff, you know, yeah. guy from Queens. Yeah, you know, Queens, Queens. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So that's uh, that's what's been up. What's been up with me? What's uh, what was your Labor Day like? I was some friends. That yeah. was nice. Um, yeah, Leo, Leo's little friends. Uh, he's got some friends, which is nice. Which means we have friends, which is helpful. Yeah. Um, do kids that was have friends? Yeah, yeah, we, 
Or do they just Sorry? have do kids have friends or do they just have people they recognize? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, so like uh Phoebe's been watching um our friend's son, Josiah, who is Leo's age. Mm -hmm. And um every time they see each other, they like run to each other and they're like excited to play with each other although leo is bigger than him oh so and... he beats him up and takes his money yeah no so what he does is he tries to pick him up he's like hey you can stand i can stand so surely you can stand so here it's easy and he tries to pick him up and he's like no i don't i don't want to i want to bear crawl everywhere so yeah that's been fun um we've been we've been sleep training although we're not calling it that because that's, no, okay. that's okay we're putting him down and letting him cry. And then he stops in like two seconds. But he was That's so great. cute tonight. Aww. He was like, this was really cute. I was talking to him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he's very good at yes or no questions. Yeah. And so I said, Leo, do you want to go to sleep by yourself tonight? And he said, no. And I said, but Leo, you can do it. I know you can do it. And he kind of smiled. And I was like, do you want to be strong? And he Whoa. said, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And I said, will you be strong? And he said, yes. Wow. And so I said, good night. And I got up and I walked out. And he went, ah. And then he stopped. And he wow. fell asleep. The duality of man. Crazy. It was crazy. It was amazing. But it's, you know, I was just laying there with him. Because what we do is we like we get him dressed and we like bounce him. I bounce him and then I, I lay him down. And I let him cuddle for a little bit. But he's like wide awake, obviously. And he goes, dad. Dad. And I'm like, yes. And he's like looking at me <laughs> uh -huh. it's great he's starting to say words saying up he's saying more he's saying thank you he's doing all these things it's great he's like a full-on person it's wild that's pretty exciting Some opinions and yeah it's great love yeah. being a dad it's yeah. I, it's solid it's good to be a dad yeah. i uh i'm really excited i've been watching a lot of instagram reels lately mm -hmm. um this is not related to what you were saying, but I saw one of Elvis singing the Rick and Morty theme song earlier today. <laughs> AI has been used for two purposes. One is is uh, not unmentionable, and the other one is uh, making cartoon characters and famous people say <laughs> the wrong things. I, my wife. The reason I thought of this is my wife is always sending me like parenting reels, and then I'm sending her like the most insane crap that I can find. <laughs> 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 the complementarity of man woman. Exactly. Like, She'll send one that's look, like this is the, here's an idea for gentle parenting. And yeah, then you're like, yeah. here's the veggie tales singing shoddy got low. <laughs> apple bottom, apple bottom jeans, jeans to the soon of the song of the Cebu. <laughs> <laughs> it just dude, it was I laughed. I laughed for like 45 minutes. <laughs> it was I like would sing it to myself and be like, shoddy got low. <laughs> Oh man, lo 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 lo. Okay, anyway, it's not important. But so Emma, was I saw one of the Beach things. Boys singing "Hurt" by Johnny Cash. That was really funny. To the those are those are fun. USA. Yeah, I like that one. I think I think AI. Everybody's all worried about AI, and I can I just say like it's the most it's it's normie coded to talk about AI these days. Yeah, at this point, yeah, because it's like. Chat GPT, nothing anymore. Like it's not really. Everyone can recognize yeah. it. It's Do not. You get very those good. ads that's like, I told, I told Jet Chat GPT to build me a Shopify website, and um, put in hot products and sell them, and it did it. And I'm like, then it. There's no way that it did it well that, because right. I've told Chat GPT that there's an h in the word mayonnaise and it was like yeah it's right here oh, yeah. Mayonnaise. yeah of course <laughs> right here <laughs> i think there's people who are like oh we have to prepare the upcoming generations for how to deal with ai so they don't lose their jobs and she's like no I one we did this with social media i don't think is phone. anyone actually going to lose their jobs from ai or is it just like people um, people are kind of creating People, they're adding jobs because now there's a new job and it's, hey, here, I'm going to teach you how not to lose your job to AI. And it's like, well. Yeah. What, some people are going to lose their jobs to artificial intelligence. So like, you know, it's, but it's all going to be like the low skilled version of, so mm -hmm. like, okay, AI can edit 
our videos now. I can upload a video to this app and it cuts out all the pauses and it can auto zoom. And then all I have to do is go back and edit and say, actually, this one's bad. This one's good. This one's fine. This one's bad. So it'll like cut out low skilled jobs, like low skilled video editing like that. But like no one wanted to do that. Like video editors now don't want to do that. And so what it'll do is it'll raise the bar mm. of what's acceptable when it comes to like artistic content. Yeah. And it'll be like, well, yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, that's obviously an AI generated photo of Pope Francis or an AI generated painting of Mary. And like, it has some aesthetic value, but like, it's still plastic in the same way that like those, um, I'm sure when they first made those little, uh, you know, those, you know, those like Mormon Jesus holy cards, No, you know, like the 1960s holy cards that are like way too perfect. Like, yes. why, or, what, yeah. When people saw those, they're like, whoa, my gosh, you're so beautiful. But now they look kitsch. I'm sure we'll see AI generated photographs as, as kitsch in the yeah. future. I'm sure that's going to happen. What the do bar you, will just be raised. It's fine. What do you think? How could we? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's funny? I like you're like plotting. I no am. more plots. We have too. We have too many things going on. I would argue that we don't have enough plots. We have too many irons in the fire. I'll tell you that. We we actually have. We have a bunch of irons sitting close to the fire. We That's don't really fair. have any irons in the fire. That's a we're, good point. We're taking steps. Um, there's a lot of audio out there of our voices, free and accessible. Yes. We should have a we should have a contest. Someone should generate us saying the most insane things. Do you think AI will be able to distinguish between our voices? I think so. Um, you think so? Yeah. That's good. I think I think worst case. Well, this is a part of the competition. Whoever can make the funniest AI conversation between the two of us uh, wins. And I will, I will personally, I'll PayPal you fifty dollars. Unless okay. you're the, unless you're the only person that submits one, and then you just win. You just win, and I'm not going to PayPal you anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to PayPal you anyway. I think that would be so. Gosh, what could we? What would we say? We would be ro- We would be robots. You I know? don't think there's not enough. There's not enough. There's it. not enough. We have there's hundreds and hundreds of hours of no, our there's voices. enough to make it, but I don't I don't I don't I don't think there's enough ideas. Like it's like it has to be the AI generated things needs to be two popular things that are yeah. not usually together. So like yeah. veggie tales, yeah. apple bottom jeans. Right. Hilarious. Yes. Veggie tales, Catholicism, very funny. Yes. I was pleased with myself with that one. I know. Um someone Someone commented, I made a VeggieTales meme where a, where Bob is saying, Larry, I think it's time we repent and submit to the Pope, which is a joke that I sent you once before, but I never posted it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I thought this is perfect. And then yeah. I edited a video and someone was like, wow, Catholics editing children's shows so low. Mm-hmm. And I replied, yes, you're right. This is the worst thing the Catholic Church has ever done. <laughs> I'm glad that we can say this is the bar and yes. we've exceeded it. Dude, people, um, I, I didn't realize how there's a lot of people that really hate us out there, you know? Yeah, man. I didn't realize this. We have a reputation. There are people who comment on our stuff and they're like, yeah, yeah, you guys suck. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, isn't and it? And they're like, why does Instagram keep showing me this? I'm like, stop yeah. commenting. It's like maybe, <laughs> maybe because maybe because you secretly... Maybe it's like when a girl pushes a guy into the mud, you know, in first grade. Yeah. It's uh-huh. like you hate us because maybe you like us a little bit. Maybe you like us a little maybe bit. You like maybe you're up. pulling our pigtails because you think you're maybe cute you're, or right. Maybe you're dissatisfied with church in an auditorium and you would like it to be in a real building, maybe for what? Or a converted basketball court. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the church down the street from my high school. I got in trouble with one of my friends because I was yeah. like complaining about this. The church down the street from my high school had um it was one big building mm-hmm. and they had like they had chairs that they could tear down and there were basketball it was carpeted but there were basketball hoop things on the, the basketball lines on the floor mm-hmm. and there were basketball hoops that could swing up and down and i was like why is there they had like a door that said sanctuary i'm like it's not a sanctuary there's nothing sacred about it you can't use it for two things if it's a sanctuary that's a big that's a big no-no and uh i was like there's like why, why do you care so much and i was like if you this is probably not fair to say, but if you build a church and you're like, we got to build a basketball court in this church. The thing that you wanted to build was a basketball court, not a church. 
Yes. So like just build a basketball court. Right. You can no have one's that. gonna get mad at you. Yeah. You can have that. You can build a basketball court. You could even make it a non-profit bat. You could even accept donations to build a basketball court. But the thing that you wanted to build was a basketball court. Not I remember <laughs> I remember when I was in seventh grade, my the Catholic uh church didn't have a um they didn't have a youth group for seventh graders because why on earth would we give community to middle schoolers? That's what confirmation class is for. Um, nice. Yeah, insane. But um, so I didn't have a I didn't have a middle school youth group. So I go to my friend's uh, Protestant church because he would invite me. And it's like, well, I got nowhere else to go, so I'll do something. We would play basketball, yeah. and then they had this they had these overnight retreats, the lock ins, you know. Oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> I remember you talking about the sanctuary was really funny to me because there were these basically there's like a basketball court and then another room and we were just kind of running back and forth between the two rooms and there were like video games over here and sports over here and um, food and stuff and at a certain point like obviously they did a altar call thing you know prayer service in the middle of the lock and and my friend was like all right guys we're going to the sanctuary and i was like all right cool there's probably there's probably some third place that's like hasn't uh -huh. been one of the two rooms that we've been in that's like looks like a church but it was just the room with the video games and the food and i was like even when i was 11 or 12 i was just like this isn't a sanctuary this is just a carpeted room with a slightly elevated platform space you yeah. know and it has it has the speakers we did we did a dance party why are you stealing later. why are you stealing words from yeah. high church just be low church be like we're yeah. going to the cafetorium yeah we're going to no, the meeting it's, it's a meeting room it's not a sanctuary. The there's nothing sanct room. about it it's an npr sunk. yeah it's just even when i was that age i was just like okay we'll, this we'll is, go to this is we'll go to the sanctuary to like, yeah this is this is a testament to formation because i mean i was not exactly a good person in middle school but who is you know uh, three people that I can think of actually, and Ethan, I guess. Yep, me. I was I, perfect. I was pretty. I was pretty set in my faith. Like I was aware of the differences between Protestantism and Catholicism. Like I was talking to. I remember talking to a friend of mine, a girl that I like. This is not nice. how you treat a girl that you like, but I was talking to a girl that I like. I was texting her right over there. Um, oh. And, that, <laughs> and uh, just I remember the situation, the scenario that I was in. So I remember me like talking about being catholic and she was mm -hmm. like what does that mean and i was like well it means i'm part of the universal church even back then i knew that nerd and she's like oh well, i'm protestant I... and i go oh do you know what protestant means she's like well i mean it means like i love jesus and yeah. like yeah i like follow him the bible and i'm like actually it means you're like protesting the catholic church and she was like oh it does it i'm like no it totally does <laughs> and um yeah and then she stopped like, texting you, know, it... you after that no we Ooh. we dated oh, you dated and then i school? never talked to her again i asked her out no 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 no. oh my gosh no this is what it was this is you this is the girl that i school. kissed and then never talked to ever again when you were this in is, seventh this grade is the girl that the last day of eighth grade i she was my first kiss and then we never talked again. that's crazy yeah i never told that story but it's really Dude, you had really a one night story. stand in eighth grade but as an eighth grader yeah <laughs> the eighth grade equivalent the good oh. kid equivalent of a one dude i no, it was like it was. I I I I meant it. I was like, I like you, and I I'm gave her. I was like, can smooch. I kiss you? And she said yes, and yes. I gave her a smooth. I asked permission. Wow, asked permission. And then I was like, okay, bye. And then I went to a student conference two weeks later, and I was like, I'm never talking to my middle school friends again. <laughs> wow, all these guys are so much cooler than me. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you yeah, think she like so. missed you? Was she like, where's where's the my where's the man who? who who Probably so not. so gently touched my lips with his sweet fragrance gross and um, <laughs> we, if you're talking about children it's so disgusting um, I, well i'm talking <laughs> about my friend patrick who was a child who's my friend now and i know her dad I'm, already hated me so let me tell you something cemented. let Sorry, me tell yeah. you something your lips haven't changed that's true so they're still that. they're still sweet and fragrant as before yes. Yes, I her dad probably just just cemented his hatred for me even more because he already yeah, hated me. He hated you, already. but whatever. And then uh, I, I my, Sean went to my middle school, and so I went to a play of his like two years later, and I saw mm -hmm. it. I was like, Haley, this is crazy. I haven't seen you since. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, since uh, since uh, since we locked like, lips at the at the avenues, the mm. outdoor mall. <laughs> It was like a school event too, and like my mom was picking me up, and she was like waiting for me in the car, and I was like, I gotta go do this. Did she see you lock lips with this girl? 
with this I, young I, she lady? probably didn't watch she's she's probably about to text me right now whether or not she your saw. mom is very discreet i will say <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> Really she knows funny. she knows how to be discreet when she wants to be. Other times she's like, "Yep, I'm gonna embarrass my kids because yeah. I birthed them," and I'm like, "Yeah, that's fair. You can do whatever you want. I actually don't care if Leah's embarrassed by me." <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna let what my kid wants dictate how I live my life. You're hungry. Yeah, shut I'm not gonna up. Gonna let what's good for my kid and his social life <laughs> I'm not, dictate I'm not, how I behave. I'm not gonna let my kid's well being be the boss of me. I'm yeah, in well, charge. I'm old. I was here first. <laughs> I'm. I'm 27. <laughs> I can do what I want. That's just a funny thing to say. Like, why are you? Why do you get to decide when I get to go to bed? I I live here. Yeah. I lived here first. You can't even vote. You can't, what are you gonna do? What, oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You gonna protest? Wait 18 years and then and then you know have a recall. What are you gonna peacefully like assemble in your crib that you can't get out of on your own, idiot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would oh, never man. call my son an idiot. That's a joke. No, me either. Wives do not like when you jokingly put down your children. I know. I'm sure. Have you made that mistake? I, I made that one. I've just like <laughs> I just have been like I've jokingly like teased him in a way that yes. like is more of a joke for me than it is for him because he doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak English, and that that still does not pass the muster. I did that when he was like an infant, infant. Yeah. And that didn't fly, and I definitely don't do it now because he can understand us now. Yeah. Yeah. We go, true. we go, we go, do you want more beans? And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> when I say beans, oh, I yeah. mean straight out of the can, not cooked. Beans. Just beans. Just Dude. Beans. Gosh, I would he love loves. He's living my dream life. He is going to. He has access to your fragrant so lips. Big. He's got beans by the can. He's got everything. <laughs> Man, what a he's life! So funny. And he's so cool. Our 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 evenings are just beans. Like we eat food really quickly, and yeah. then we just okay. What else do we have? He keeps saying more. What yeah. else do we have? Yeah. We have gold. Do you want? Do you want pasta? We can cook you pasta. And he's like, and we cook him pasta, and he eats all of it. And he's like, <laughs> like where's he going? <laughs> What's gonna happen? Are you gonna explode? Yeah. We fed him so much the other day. That he had one of those King K rule bellies. Oh, I it love it when like the baby gets hard. the big belly. Yeah. It was hard. Like oh, it was like cool. all of it was condensed. And it was like he had like a little. A he little looked like one of them big... African kids on the commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looked like we didn't feed him. Was... Yeah. <laughs> you know. What I'm oh, that's about. sad. It's not sad. They're happy to, you know, be on the commercial. <laughs> they're excited. They see a camera and they're like, oh, yeah, this means we're going to get 25 cents a day. I know. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, what was i saying before i start but i don't want to get too far away from the protestant thing because i want oh, okay. there was something i wanted to bring up we want to talk more find, about protestantism yeah well it's something that i find odd and i wanted to know because you are my local um you're my expert on many things i go to yeah. you whenever i have a question sure. or a concern mm -hmm. or um I'm stupid about something. I go to Patrick and I'm like, make me unstupid about this thing. And usually <laughs> you do. Uh, yeah. It's weird that you never asked me for help with anything, but it's not a big deal. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll ask I you know. for help. No, more. it's okay. I just, I'm just Can you help me? <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I know. Sorry. I said the SHL. Yeah, that's, right. that's all right. That's all right. Ryan, so, bleep that out. I've been seeing so being on the gram, right? And I and I'm looking for reels. I'm looking for content. I'm looking for things to steal, to yoink and twist, and make my own. And I keep finding this weird. There's something weird about the way yeah. that um, Gen Z Protestants talk about like the Bible and talk about prayer. And I don't know if it's just like we were doing the same thing, and I just don't even remember it. Like when I was 18 mm -hmm. or 19. But I saw like I've been I've seen a couple of things. I'll give two examples. Example number one, this guy was like hosting a like Bible study, right? And it yeah. was like the caption was like, join it this, you know, this time, GMT, you know, for the whole world. Uh, we're going through Acts chapter nine. And it was like him and his friend, and they were like dapping each other up and they were like, Yeah, like jumping up and down, and they were like, We're they're shaking their Bible around, like Acts nine, let's go. And they like were so they were like Cool, it's so hyped. Cool, man. Like, yeah. I was, like, I was like, that. Okay. So you're doing a Bible study. Um, 
that's great. And then the the other one that I saw that was really like uh, that have been interesting are these ones where like people will go out and they'll maybe like pray with people or they're like evangelize or like do some street evangelization and they're talk to some people. They'll make friends. They'll pray with people. They'll help people accept Jesus into their heart or they'll do like a praise and worship night at their homes. And they'll be like, this is what life is all about. They're like running around the house and they're yelling and they're hooting and hollering. And everyone in the comments is like, oh, I wish I had friends like this. I wish I had community like this, but it's just like this weird. It's, it's different than like the, like when we would go bare handing on campus and, yeah. and, <laughs> Like bare handing uh, is like cold calling, bare, but in person. Bare handing is like street evangelization. Yeah. Like we would go out when I was a focus missionary, we would go out onto the University of Tulsa campus with the express purpose of like meeting people and mm. maybe praying with them. actually we had no agenda really at all. Like we my goal was I'm gonna meet someone, talk to them about their life, get to know them. If it makes sense to invite them to something, I will. If not, that's okay. And then usually I'd see them again, you know, and then I get another opportunity yeah. to talk to them. And you'd, we built a lot of relationships this way. And we invited people to mass and they, we, eventually they came to Bible studies, but we didn't go with like the intense purpose of like, we're going to find all the non-Christians and like get them yeah. to Bible study or like get them to accept Jesus. And so, <clears throat> but like at the end of that, we would go out for like two hours and it was like exhausting, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. cause you're I just bet. getting rejected a bunch of times. And so I don't know if it's just like, I'm older or I'm like, Maybe I didn't have like the joy of the Lord or whatever. But when I was doing like missionary work on a college campus and like doing the same thing that these kids are doing, I never yeah. like came back at night and was like, yeah, let's freaking go like dapping up my boys. You know, like it was just, it was more just like, yeah, uh -huh. this is what we do. And it, I find it rather repulsive. And I don't know if that's just me. <laughs> I don't know well, if that's just think... me with a hard heart or if there's like something, there's something that's good there that I'm not seeing or if it's like this it just feels like this weird um it just feels weird it doesn't feel real and yeah, it's just cuz it's not I, my experience i don't know I, I have good news for you it's all of those things i think cuz okay. there's you know it's we're talking about people's motivations here so you know rarely is there one we do this a lot with other people with each other and with ourselves like this was my motivation for doing this thing and you yeah. like isolate it down cuz it's easier to tell a story and be like this was my one reason for doing this and reality, you're a multifaceted human being. You have many no. different reasons for doing one no. or two things. No. And so no, I'm single track mind. There's part of it. Part of it is this is how everyone in Gen Z acts to a certain extent. Like this really? is just like let's go LFG hype hype. Uh like we're so back, you know, just screaming and, and very excited. That's I think that's just part of it. Another yeah. part of it is it's performative because it's Instagram. So yeah, like people commenting, oh, I wish I had community like that. It's like I don't, I don't know if they have community like that. You know, That's I don't what I'm know. Thinking the other thing too that I don't see any of is like there's nobody there with kids. You know, there's nobody there that's like they're all just a bunch of like young, hot, single people. And so it's like, of course, you're all acting that way because they're all like it's it's like the the feathers are out, you know, and you're trying to yes, you're trying yeah. to to catch it's partially that, and it's also partially just. The, the joie de vie, the, hmm? the, the little machine that keeps liquids at a certain temperature. <laughs> I think it's called a sous vide. I'm not sure. <laughs> sous vide. A, does Cuisinart have one? A sous uh, vide. No, it's, it's just a, it's a youth thing. I think, I mean, I was yeah. never the, I was never the, we love Jesus chant guy, but as a kid, I understood yeah. it. Yeah. I understood the impulse. Why does it know? bother me so much? Is it like my Catholic sensibilities? That's like, that's just not how this works. Or is it like, am it's I ashamed possible. secretly of God? And I don't love I don't him enough. I think that's it. I think you recognize, I think, you know how when, whenever people on Twitter wring their hands about Steubenville, they always yeah. talk about, well, yeah. it's a superficial faith. It's, yes. 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 <laughs> The bread doesn't last forever. It's mm -hmm. bread, but Jesus still gave it because it was food and they needed it. And so the bread doesn't last forever. The wine doesn't last forever. He gave wine first. They didn't really need wine. They could have done without it. They didn't really need bread. They could have gone home, but Jesus multiplied the loaves and he turned water mm -hmm. into wine, right? Like he gave the people what, even what they didn't need, what was convenient, what was pleasing to the crowd. Because sometimes he pleased the crowds. He didn't trust them, but he pleased them. And so I'm not like, I'm not like offended or 
or surprised that people are attracted to the more superficial aspects of community and Catholicism and Christianity. Like I used to think I felt the Holy spirit at, at church, but it was really just, I felt the same thing in a one direction concert mm-hmm. is really just, I liked yeah. concerts. Well, yes, the feeling you feel at yeah. church because it's just a concert is concert feeling and that's fine. And it's a, it's something that you'll feel at a, a worship concert and it's something that you'll feel at one direction. Now, there's probably some differences that you're not noticing, but like you, you can't stay there. That's why the seeker sensitive church movement didn't really work because it, it was great for getting people in the door and staying there for a year or two, but the churn was so high because people needed something deeper or, you know, they needed something to help them through their tragedies or whatever. So part of it is that the good wine come, you have served the good wine first. Most people wait, but you know, Jesus serves the good wine first. Yeah. You know, you get, Get the really, um, or wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Most people serve the good wine first. Yes. Jesus serves it last. Um, you know, most people, their youth mm-hmm, is the mm-hmm. energy, right? They have the good wine first, their energy, they're like all this stuff. And it peters mm. out over time. And that's what's happening. Like, these kids are going to hit something where they're like, oh, you know what? Actually, it's really hard to, you know, keep this kind of enthusiasm for the gospel. up. I'm just not going to have right. it. Um, or they'll have to turn it into something else. Yeah. Um, I, th- I So I think like what you're feeling, I felt as well, but it's important not to let it turn into the direction of, Oh, that is useless. There's, there's room for it. It's yeah, fine. definitely. It's helping people be like, I want Christian community. Yeah. Which I think is, I think is good. I think for, for me, that feeling of the, uh, the one direction concert was just the feeling of, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I, it's just the feeling of being in the same room as pretty women. That was the feeling that I, that I chased, you know, that's like why I went on sure. more retreats and why not like entirely. Cause I did enjoy like the formation and the prayer and the adoration, and mm. all those things. But at the end of the day, what was I spending 90% of my mental energy on ladies, you know, cause it was a safe environment because like these were like, there was a chance that something would happen with these people. As opposed to like at yeah. school where there would just be like a girl and I would just like them, but there'd be no chance because I was, uh, was not gonna talk I was band kid <laughs> coded. And so it was over for me before it even started. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that, I think that has a big, big part to play with it. Um, so I just, I, I wonder for us talking about like the superficiality, you say that there's a place for it. Um, I guess, I guess as long as we have like multiple facets in what we do, you know, like the podcast is a little bit deeper. The discord is a little bit deeper. You know, our relationship is a little bit deeper. It's like the Instagram is so like, I don't want to play up people's superficial perception of the church just because it's more popular. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's, I'm concerned it's, I about mean, that. A, it's not, I think about it's this not all just the that time. it's superficial. It's like, it's, it's a limited, it's a small view, yeah. you know, it's, it's a less, uh, it, uh, superficial is because people are having real encounters, you know, like people are having real, uh, real encounters with Jesus. And so it's not, it's not purely superficial, but the, um, the energy, that kind of intensity and that kind of um, exterior joy is not sustainable. And at a certain yeah. point you have to recognize that it's not, and then let yourself be okay. Because if you, if you continue in the superficial joy and the super, sorry, if you continue in the exterior joy without interior joy, you're going to be playing a part and you're slowly going to get jaded and being like, I have to play yeah. this role. Right. And this is when people start talking about religious trauma. Like I feel like I had to put on a face and it's like, yeah, actually you should, you didn't have to, but you know, you, they, a world, uh, the only place you could go for church was a place where exterior joy is, expected and exterior suffering is not (laughs) tolerated and this was something that people experienced at franciscan often people would you know kind of shy away from people who were depressed or people who were were going through it because it didn't fit with the brand of the university where everyone's happy and everyone's friends and everyone's praying all the time Mm -hmm. oh you're you're depressed so you're not praying that must mean that something's wrong with you like this is you know, 
And so it, it, you can't, you just, it's not, it's not that the first part is superficial. It's just that it doesn't last. And so if you expect it to last, it's going to turn into superficiality. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It, Good. it does. I... So they're not wrong. You're not wrong. No, you don't, nobody's, you... nobody's wrong except for everyone who's not me is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it is a little silly to get hyped up about Bible study. It, it is a little silly. Um, and it's, it's a little that's all they have. It is. You know, I know that's, that's true. That's it's true. That's either, all it's either, it it's either church on Sunday or Bible study. Yeah. So yeah, it's either listening to sermon podcasts or it's mm -hmm. Bible study. Mm -hmm. So isn't it, isn't it odd? Maybe this is, maybe this is the problem. You and me, we're in our mid to late twenties and it feels like we're already like out of the youthful energy stage and we're into the uh, well, informed even, pessimism stage. <laughs> yeah, like we you can't you can't even judge it by age because there's just life events that have happened to us that haven't happened to people that are our age. Yeah, it's true. Like our uh, two recessions, our, our women's three group, wars, our women's groups are. Uh, never mind, I won't talk about that. But Wait, like our women's we, groups. Do um, you know, my young adult group? We're not in anyway. I'm not a woman. Well, I'm talking about ours. Like you're our in a woman's group. group I'm saying our young adult group, they're okay. women's groups. So oh, we have a, I'm part of them. So my, my, my friends started this amazing ministry that is going super well. Mm -hmm. They just started it themselves. They incorporated it as a nonprofit and they're running a young adult ministry. They have three events a, a week, one men's group and two women's groups. Typical uh, part of the course, I'd say. Yeah. They're running a retreat next month. And it's going to have like a hundred people at it. Yeah. A hundred young adults. That's cool. I mean, like, try. W when was the last time you saw like a Catholic parish have a young adult ministry that pulls a hundred people to a retreat? I don't know. Cause I don't attend young adult ministry events. So that could be happening. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. All Probably young not. adult ministries that I know about are like on the diocesan level. And right. You know, it's like we we had trouble we had trouble pulling a hundred people to a retreat with our high school youth ministry. And our high school youth ministry was huge. Yeah, and no one there had jobs. <laughs> they were free all weekend. Yeah, they had nothing they are, going on. They are free. It's free. Sorry. Anyway, I'm singing their praises, but the reason yeah. I was bringing them up was because um, we split the women into married women and, and unmarried oh. because it's just married women have different life experiences. You know, like they. They're married yeah. with children. They're going through different things. Yeah, I actually don't and think so it's, it's like, good to mix up so people you, on retreats. You know, you got to put the put the similar people next to each other. I don't I don't want to be in a in a group with a eighty five year old man and like a forty five year old man. Like that's just no fun <laughs> on a retreat. Like you I'm don't fine, actually. I'm anything. fine with talk. I'm fine with talking to him, but like you know, it's like or I'm fine with talking to a guy who's unmarried and single and like you know trying to date. That's fine, mm -hmm. but it's like at a certain point, I just want to talk to someone who understands what it's like to have a wife and son. Mm -hmm. Roughly the same age as mine. That's nice. Yeah. Um, That's what anyway, I'm for. So, um, sorry, you were saying about maybe it's because you're 20. I don't remember what I was saying. Yeah, I'm in my you're mid like, to maybe late 20s. Maybe because you're in your mid to late 20s and you've moved past that part of your life. That's what you're saying. Yeah, maybe we're just, uh, maybe we're too, I, I just feel, I feel like I know too much and I've seen too much and I feel like I'm better than it all sometimes, which is wrong. But I also think that there's some legitimately <laughs> like good points. Like I've been rereading John Sr., about the restoration of Christian culture. And he's, he kind of digs on like small groups and like men's groups and women's groups as like ways to engage in Christian community. His whole thing is like, just have people over to your house and just like sing songs. Like, what are you, why are you, yeah. why are you like meeting and talking? Play the piano, <laughs> you know, like it's kind of his whole thing, um, which I think yeah. is really, it's like eat meals together, play football in the yard, like live your life. Um, and I think sometimes we get like too religious about it all. Like mm. it's supposed to just be like our, it's, it's like our life and it's all integrated and not like, you know, we have these nights where we get all hyped up about God. It's just like, no, our whole life is elevated because we have God, you know? And I think that's kind of, yeah. that's where I want to be. And that's where I think a lot of my friends are, but I'm not, uh, it's not all the way there yet. So we're just, uh, we're trying, but we're, we're at time because we gotta we gotta do another podcast tonight and we have to record an ad. So we gotta <laughs> we gotta wrap this up. Do you have any final thoughts? 
I do. I was just going to say final thought. So I was talking to my young adult group friends. Oh, um, disgusting. Ab- about this mm-hmm. because I asked them, I was like, all right. So um, they were saying, they were saying they're running into the problem of um, it's hard for young married couples with kids to come on a retreat. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, the chirp guys at Ascension, the old guys who do Christ News's Parish, they talk. They walk up to every man and they're like, "Are you coming on the retreat?" And I'm like, "I can't because I can't leave my wife with my son for a right. weekend." You guys don't offer childcare, so until you figure that out, yeah. Bye. But even then, it's like, and then they, they did offer childcare, and it's like, well, no one showed up, so they no one took advantage of it. So it's like, even if yeah. you offer childcare, it's still you have to trust a stranger with your kid right. anyway. And so I was like, great, so. The only the only tool that the church has for people to that the the wind build send right the win the only tool the church has in its belt institutionally at the parish level at least is go on a retreat um and have saturday night adoration <laughs> you know that's that's the best tool we got great tool gets a lot it's of good, people it's a, lot a good of people's tool witnesses are like a lot of yeah. people's witnesses are like oh like i really just i felt god on saturday night adoration great awesome or wednesday night if you went to a focus conference <laughs> um awesome so what do we, I was asking them, I was like, what do we do? How do we, how do we get, what's the win stage for young married couples with kids? What is it? And we were talking about, we just didn't know what it was, but it might just be slower. And it might just be that, you know, like have a big community of young families with kids. And then when you meet, have a, a, a situation where it's normal to talk about religious things off the cuff. And that will just naturally if you're in a if you're if you're the only person in a room full of people that are playing, having fun, laughing, and eating food and talking about God occasionally, but not all the time, eventually you're gonna start going, Maybe I should take faith more seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's 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 the little door that Jesus needs to open. And so, like, maybe that's the answer for young adult families, young mm-hmm. families with kids for the mm-hmm. win stage. The answer can't be wait until they're 50 and they can go on an adult retreat. That can't no. be it. <laughs> no, I, I think I've been on some of these adult retreats and they're pretty god awful. So, um, because they're all is good, we've had good chirp is fine. With chirp. Um, they're, I mean, they're all written in the 60s and 70s, and so they all have this just like they're all designed with the boomer in mind and uh, sure, and yeah. nobody else. It's like if you're a guy who's never had an emotional connection with someone since you were a boy, like this is the retreat for you. You know, it's like yeah. for it's for men who are 50 that are emotionally stunted. That's what it's for. And it's like great if that's you. Yeah. But if that's marriage not, encounter felt like that a little bit. Have you been yeah. on one? Mm-hmm. Or engaged encounter? It felt like yeah. that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I have a lot more thoughts about this. I'm trying to work out what it means to have this community. Um, because I don't think it looks like having a Bible study with my neighbors. Um, but I also don't think it looks like just kind of hanging out and like watching football together every weekend so no. i'm trying to like there has to be some secret third thing and so play the piano play the piano and that's why i'm learning every night i kind of get home and i doodle a little bit i'm trying to learn different you know play with two nice. hands i'm trying to learn how to play with two hands i did i did a song with two hands the other day or at least like a couple that's huge. lines Dare are you going to scarborough fair i did that a few times <laughs> it's pretty good um yeah my, my friend zach is learning the the uh, the organ oh, it's been learning yeah. it since he was in seminary and yeah uh, that's pretty cool yeah. i mean i've oh. i've known how to use mine since i was born so good for him for finally trying to <laughs> i pee all over the place all the time yeah Kids gotta I, learn. Got, I got great organs baby all right that's <laughs> it for as it for us we gotta we gotta get on we got it's 9 p.m 10 p.m for patrick we gotta keep moving so that he doesn't fall asleep or could do something he regrets it's so funny we chose thursday night because Saturday, Friday morning is my earliest morning. <laughs> we chose it together. I asked you if Thursday I know. would be good. You were like, yeah, man. It, it's the only one that makes sense for my marriage and my family. <laughs> my marriage. My Sharona. Okay. Patrick, do you have anything else for the people? Actually, no, we got Patreon. You need to talk about Patreon before we close the show. Oh, yes. Uh, if you thought this episode was worth a cup of coffee, please go to patreon.com slash the crunch and give $10 a month. And as a thank you, we will give you access to our 40 episodes along with our uh, virtual pilgrimage, the Holy land. We did a, a virtual pilgrimage, which is awesome. 
And uh, yeah, join, join our Discord, bit that all slash crunch Discord, and you'll get an exclusive Patreon chat. Mm. That's real fun. Mm. Real active. I like it. It is active. A lot of people are talking. Other people share their personal lives in the Patreon yeah. chat, especially as it, as the bigger Discord gets larger and larger. There's more and more people. The Patreon Discord is great because it's yeah. it's smaller. It's more focused. Every I feel time, like I can every catch time up with we people. post, every time we post on Instagram, we add another like 15 people to the Discord. So like. Yeah. We're just going to post every week and add fifth. So the Discord's only getting bigger. So get in there now. Join on Patreon so you're in the smaller version of it. <laughs> also, if you're in the Discord, make sure you speak up. We got we got hundreds of people in there, and I feel like I only see from 50 regularly. So uh, feel free yeah. to contribute. You're not being weird. The weird thing is being in the Discord, reading all the messages, and never saying anything. So uh, please contribute because you're valuable. Uh, Patrick, do you have anything else for the people? Tune in next week. Um, or remember, kids, you're not morally culpable if you see the car and just simply don't get out of the way. Thank you all for listening. Please pray for us. We will be praying for you. We'll see you all. Sorry, was that one morbid? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was fine. I don't get it, but...